好，我哋大家今日誒、呃、開始開會啦，好啊，係，好，啊各位，係，啊，啊，好。Uh, 首先咧就誒，我哋今日咧就歡。First of all, I'd like to welcome from the police,、uh, Madam Lam Hui Chong. Madam Lam will take over from、uh, Madam Lau as、um, the head of、um, the management. And like,、uh, I'd like to register a vote of thanks to、uh, Madam Lau. Uh, for her support over the years, and we have、uh, been having very good、uh, cooperation. And I wish uh, Rebecca uh, will uh, continue with uh, the spirit of、um, full cooperation. I'm not going to introduce the other police、uh, officers one by one, except to say that、uh, welcome, Rebecca. And I wish、um, Madam Lau、um, uh, every success in her new endeavour.、Uh, Chairman, thank you. And I'd like to、uh, thank Chairman and, and Deputy Chairman、um, for the, all the、um, support、um, for our work in the police, and I, I'm really grateful for the cooperation there. We have all the、uh, members here except uh, four: um, Vice Chair Mr. Christopher Chung,、uh, two Mr. Lambs, and、uh, Madam Song. They are otherwise engaged today. Item number one: confirmation of the minutes of the previous meeting,、uh, which have been circulated to members. Any? Do I hear any amendments? If not,、um, let's、um, take the minutes. As read. And next、um, presentation. There are two items there, and they are matters、um, of concern in the community,、uh, like a death inquiry and also missing persons. I, I'd like to call upon that, please,、um, to give us give us presentation, please. Chairman, thank you. Since、um, the social event、um, last year, there are. Rumors in the community: some、uh, people disappeared and some、uh, committed suicide, and they、um, doubt, doubted、um, the、uh, professional standards of the police. And some、um, went so far as to say that the police covered up、um, the, the causes of death. The couple has invited two speakers、uh, to brief members on、um, the, the flow of work.、Uh, we're going to have、um, Madam Hui. Um, SPHQ CRM, and then we're going to have、um, Superintendent Intendant Long,、uh, SPOPS NTN,、uh, to talk about missing persons. Madam, please. Thank you, Madam. Chairman, members. I am uh, Acting SPHQ、uh, CRM、uh, Huihui. I'd like to、um, brief members on the work、uh, we undertake when the bodies are discovered, and also the coordination among departments. When death、uh, occurs,、um, the police、uh, would be informed、uh, normally, and that, that may、uh, involve、um, murder or body falling from height, or body、uh, discovered in the sea, or accidental death, and so on. Now, less.、Um, Deal with、um, the number of cases from 15 to、uh, 19. The trend has been stable, as you can see. Each year, about 8,000 cases from 2019. Uh, they include a murder, suicide, homicide, and body discovered. For these、um, death cases. We have to have regard、um, to the coroner's figures. At the moment,、uh, we can only cover up to、uh, 2018. Now, for the 8,000 or so death cases, basically, the police, after going through the, the preliminary procedures, will submit、um, a preliminary investigation report to the coroner. In 2018, according to 2018 reports, about 10% of the cases. 
the in which um, the coroner uh, would require further investigation by the police and a further report um, would have to be submitted. And 10% of the cases in which um, there would be inquests uh, to be held for 2018, for instance, as you can see, 8,543 cases and they were dealt with uh, by the police in which uh, 1038 cases um, the coroner um, directed a report to be submitted. Uh, there's about uh, 116 cases uh, and inquest um, had to be held. As to whether um, a report has to be submitted or whether an inquest uh, is held, uh, the decision lies with um, the coroner. Uh, the factors that are taken into account in making the decision, I will uh, be uh, briefing members on that in greater detail. Now for um, the uh, discovery of uh, bodies, the police would conduct investigation to ascertain the, the causes of death and also what the circumstances under which um, the death occurred. In the process, uh, we would um, liaise with uh, the pathologist and also um, the government laboratory. And each party uh, will submit um, our respective findings um, to the coroner for, uh, for him to take a decision. First of all, um, when the police receive a uh, death case, we would act in accordance with um, the law and also the internal guidelines uh, for uh, work to be undertaken. We have uh, patrol officers on the scene to carry out the investigation. Uh, they have two purposes. First, to ascertain the identity of the, the disease. Second, um, to ascertain whether there are any suspicious circumstances, whether homicide um, is suspected or whether this has anything to do with other criminal cases. In terms of um, the, the procedures, as you're probably aware, we would be turning up at the scene together with um, the paramedics. We would um, examine the body uh, to look for signs of life. If there is any sign of life, uh, we have to prioritize uh, life saving. And if um, the, the, um, the person is uh, really uh, dead, uh, we would uh, search um, for identity documents to verify the identity uh, or whether they, um, the, um, the, um, the death is caused by any crimes. We would be um, calling upon the assistance of the pathologist uh, to examine the, the wounds. And the pathologist would look at the, the appearance of the body uh, to work out the, the timing of the death. Now, for cases uh, where we cannot identify the body, or maybe um, it, it will start to, um, to um, rot and we cannot identify the body, we will then uh, collect um, the fingerprints, uh, the palm print, and the DNA uh, samples and uh, conduct um, comparison with um, the data bank to, to verify the identity. While dealing with uh, the body, we would uh, conduct a whole series of work on the scene. Uh, we would um, gather evidence uh, from various sources. We do not rule out any uh, causes um, like suicide or homicide. And we have to get together all the facts, like uh, whether there were any signs of um, a fight now for suspected uh, suicide, or whether there is any, um, any, um, any note uh, left behind. Uh, by the deceased, and we may uh, broaden the scope of the investigation. We'll look at the, the social media account to see whether there are any um, signs um, to ascertain his life before death, and we would um, see whether there are any CCTV uh, um, footages, and also um, the um, telephone traffic, uh, whether before um, uh, he or she died, and any communication with any particular party. And depending on the circumstances, we would uh, summon uh, different experts. And you probably noticed that uh, we have um, the um, 
forensic uh, officers to get the fingerprints. If there is any um, any shooting, uh, we will have um, the ballistic um, officers um, to to offer us assistance. And in the process, we will uh, keep in close contact uh, with uh, the deceased and to understand uh, actually the life history, understand uh, actually the life history of uh, the deceased, just like if they have a long chronic uh, well, a medical uh, history, is there any need actually attempt of suicide before, etc. We will also look at the site and uh, to see if there's any weakness to tell us uh, the process. And then if so, then we will actually uh, get the testimony from those weaknesses. And after all this evidence collection, and uh, I, if we can identify any suspicion, and then and, uh, we will try to look uh, whether that uh, the suspected or uh, uh, well, we suspect we are still on site, so we will try to actually to, to arrest them. And then after all this, we will just send the cases to the criminal department to further investigation of the case. And after the handling the cops, and, and then after finishing all the related matters, we will call upon the food and hygiene department and then the, to handle and also to transport uh, the, the cops to the public mortuary. And after the sending it to the public mortuary, we will call upon the family to identify the body. And in case of death, as you recall the graph, we'll work with the corona, with uh, the, the chemist, government chemistry, uh, lab and then the, the corona's uh, well, duty is to, to the certified the cause of death and uh, for everybody that uh, sent to uh, the public mortuary the corona the, will examine the body there to see if there's a special wounds like a uh, wound uh, by the knives and other marks and after the examination on the appearance then uh, they will uh, send an initial report uh, to uh, the court and uh, if uh, the coroner well receive the report and then uh, well suggest that that should be further stepped uh, to ascertain the cause then the coroner will take steps uh, to do uh, the, the further examination of the body and then uh, they might uh, take some the biopsy from the, the body and then, then to do the further examination by the government uh, lab and of course, the, the government lab uh, will oftentimes uh, have to come to talk to us. The government chemists uh, uh, mainly identified and also well, uh, preserve and then keep all this evidence uh, from the site. And for instance, and then the, there might be the, some the bio uh, uh, matters like uh, hair, and then also the lice and fabric so that is uh, found on the body. Then they need actually to keep it, and then uh, will further analysis uh, will be done on this evidence. And maybe there are other samples. Uh, uh, well, these samples will give us a further evidence, like uh, signs of fights, uh, like uh, actually handwriting and also DNA, et cetera. And then these are all subjected to further analysis. And after all this investigation, and we need to uh, report according to, to the uh, coroner's ordinance. And there are the, the 20 uh, cases of death that we need actually to report to the coroners, include uh, like this unknown cause, uh, the suicide, and also the death caused by the well, crime actions. And that they include the, the different circumstances well, well, all that indicates that if uh, our case falls into one of these categories, then we need actually to have, uh, well, come up with the initial report uh, for the corona so that uh, the corona will know the, how the uh, situation, like the incident happened, and so he could decide accordingly. And the corona. As I just said, uh, the, the uh, government lab and forensic uh, well, experts, and then they will investigate the cause of death. And the, all evidence will be submitted to the coroners, and the coroner will investigate uh, 
well, the, the, all things related to the case. And he is the third of the, uh, of the case. He will, of course, uh, read uh, the initial report and other reports submitted by other experts. And at this particular stage, he will determine whether there is enough evidence and to decide whether th that th this uh, death cases is uh, with suspicion or without suspicious uh, circumstances. And if he found that is, um, there is no suspicious circumstances, he could uh, decide uh, whether that the investigation should stop or not. And he could also order or call upon the police to, to do further investigation. And then uh, later on, and then uh, submit an uh, investigative report. Coronas, uh, it, despite the, the initial investigation report, uh, if he decides that there should be the, a further investigation, the police will do so, according to the request of the coroner. And uh, in the particular cases uh, that the coroner find it fit uh, to have independent uh, or uh, studies, that he could also call upon the, the a court, uh, respective experts to do those investigations. Finally, the coroner will decide whether that an inquest should be called. And in accordance to the coroner's ordinance, if uh, well, actually someone died in the custody, then uh, well, an inquest uh, is needed. And then they need to be conducted in the court. And the coroner, uh, with a five uh, person in ju uh, jury, uh, they can uh, study the, the identity of uh, the deceased and also the cause of the death. And finally, of course, the, the coroner will make a verdict. And then the verdict will include uh, well, natural death, uh, suicide, or homicide. And if the coroner uh, uh, decides that the cause of death could be uh, or eliminate or reduced it, uh, by the improvement of uh, certain uh, circumstances, then he could make a recommendation stations accordingly. And if he find uh, other uh, evidence that he can refer the cases uh, to the uh, Secretary of Justice for follow up. And in the well, different uh, case of death, the police is responsible for investigation. And in the process, as you would uh, recall, that we work together with different departments closely. The corona is the, the final uh, decision maker, and then the, he uh, well, delivered the verdict. And in the process, the family and other interested persons could participate in the process. And this ends my report. I would like one clarification is uh, that the number that uh, over 8,000 uh, body found, that, that doesn't include those found in the hospital, and that has already certified that by the, the doctors. No, yes, you're right. If uh, well, the, the doctor already certified in hospital that that is not being included in the, the 8,500 or so. If there is no doctor in charge, and then the, well, he died in the emergency, then uh, would that be included in this of 8,000 or so? Well, except that, well, in the process, even in the hospital, that it actually involves some the criminal offenses, then uh, it will be included. And then, as I, just, I mentioned, that, that the 20 secretary that uh, is reportable or uh, that uh, actually exam well, those are being reported within the 14 days and certification by the doctor. Well, any other question? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Superintendent, for your detailed report. There are two questions. The first of all is uh, that uh, you mentioned about the process. Under different circumstances or a different situation that a body is found, well, whatever that circumstances, whatever the situation is, is uh, the same process being deployed or undertaken? Well, the second question, is there any example that there are cases that work otherwise? Or that uh, do you need other approval for a different process uh, to be undertaken? Or that this is uh, compulsory? Well, thank you for your question. Basically, for investigation, even 
when the body is uh, discovered in the, the different circumstances like a fallen from height or a floating corpse, that I think basically the process is the same, is similar. It depends on the different uh, cases, whether the different experience will be called upon, or sometimes uh, you really need to, to uh, call upon the electric expert, the electricity experts, etc. If we consider that that uh, is a criminal case, uh, then uh, we will call upon uh, our team from the criminal department, and they will do further investigations on this particular case. And in the process, other than the police, uh, we also uh, well mentioned coronas and also the inquests. I also want uh, to suggest that uh, the inquest of death is called upon uh, after the, the corona, uh, well, uh, called upon after uh, examine all the evidence and reports. And in some circumstances, well, like uh, well, interested parties, including family of the deceased or that the employer from the, some the industrial accidents, and or uh, the, uh, the the Secretary of Justice, uh, DOJ, and if uh, the, the, they see it fit to court upon the inquest, then the, they can actually or, uh, uh, request from the court of first instance to see if that uh, that needed to be made. And that is quite different from what I just mentioned. But this is uh, for the protection for the public. If uh, the public uh, see that uh, they want to uh, make uh, actually the, the uh, well, investigation from a different or alternative of, uh, well, option, they can do so. But it means that if there is no certification of a natural death from a doctor, then the, you, the, the investigation need to go through the police and go through the corona. And then the corona will decide what to do next, right? Yeah. Any other questions? Sylvia, a follow-up question. Well, the police will uh, validate the identity of the deceased to see if there's any the suspicion and, and uh, whether there is uh, well, uh, suspicious circumstances or not the suspicious circumstances. Is it uh, to the police uh, uh, well, discretion that they can decide on that? Well, thank you for your question. Well, uh, I would like to ask uh, another question. If or if not there's any suspicion, will it affect your investigation, what is the differences for the two different cases? Well, for those death officers with suspicious circumstances or with uh, no, then I think that, uh, well, it depends on the different uh, well, phase of investigation and the different person involved. Well, as I just mentioned, in the, well, the initial investigation, there are there are a lot of uh, works involved. We will have an initial assessment, and then the, the patrol officer or the commander, after the while well, investigating the, the body and also the the uh, scene, then the, they will decide, and then the submit the report that whether that is. Uh, well, have suspicious uh, well, death circumstances or not. So this is the initial report. So whether that uh, there are the suspicious circumstances or not, uh, well, for no suspicion, then the, this report uh, will still go to, to the coroner's, and then the, he or she will uh, well, review all the reports that come to him to decide whether that is a suspicion or not. But for the, the police, uh, will they find it is a suspicious circumstances of the death is uh, identified, then they will uh, actually just submit, uh, refer the case to the criminal department. And that uh, our criminal team will go to the scene again and to do further investigation to see if there are other evidence that they could collect to build up the case. 
And so, uh, well, with the, the government lab, independent uh, or, or advisors, etc., all this will go, go to do the corona to make the final decision to a certain uh, the cause of death. So you can see that in the process, there are different phases, different steps, and the police uh, can actually, uh, well, give uh, their advice uh, to the coroner to make the decision. Right. Uh, sorry. Right, let me add, if a body is found, uh, you can imagine that um, there must be someone who called uh, the police, uh, unless we are talking about um, the uh, bodies uh, that have um, rotten. The paramedics uh, would be uh, examining whether there are any signs of life. Now, for bodies that have uh, become uh, rotten, um, they, we will call um, the, um, the the uh, vehicles to pick up the, the body. Now, sometimes um, there is a patrol officer who I, who um, saw the, the body and will have um, the on duty, the officer on duty, who would uh, look at the circumstances and also examine the body and also um, ascertain whether there are any suspicious circumstances. Or if um, there is um, uh, someone uh, who uh, jumped out of the building and the body is found, and we would um, ascertain uh, where the, the, um, the, the dead body um, jumped jumped out of. We would look at the CCTV and all, all the um, evidence. We have to identify the, the person. Is he uh, living there? Uh, is he not living there? There are a lot of procedural steps to take. We have the patrol officer, the, the, um, the commander of the squad, and the paramedic, and, and so on. If uh, we um, have any um, suspicion, uh, then we would be inviting um, the uh, pathologist uh, to come along. Let's say there is um, a knife wound um, on the body. The pathologist um, will be examining the body. We'll look at the uh, the uh, state of um, um, rotting of the body, and we will try to preserve uh, all the um, evidence for investigation. So at every stage, we have um, officers involved in the preliminary assessment. If um, it raises uh, some suspicion, we will step up or intensify the investigation. If the wound uh, has um, is uh, nothing out of the ordinary, um, the body will be sent to the mortuary and the pathologist would examine the body. If there are any suspicions, we will be notified um, for us to conduct more in-depth and more extensive investigation. So from the, the point uh, a body is found, uh, there are a lot of um, professionals uh, who are stepping in and, and offering um, their expert advice. And there is a bar chart, Madam, 8,000 or so cases per year. My question is, if you didn't tell me, I wouldn't know that there are 20 or so people um, who died, except those who died in hospitals. These are bodies that are found. I'm sure the police must have the information for these 8,000 or so cases. Do you have any breakdown um, regarding the, the causes of death? Let's um, brush aside um, the suicide cases. Let's um, brush the, these aside for the remaining cases. Do you have any breakdown regarding the, the causes? And for these 8,000 cases, other than suicide, uh, what proportion of them are related to uh, criminal cases? Now, we're not talking about 2019, maybe investigation is still going on. For 2018, do you have any ballpark figure? I, I think that includes um, the traffic accidents. Uh, don't they? Right, thank you. Let's take uh, 2019, for instance. 8885, uh, you asked whether there are any criminal uh, elements. 24 uh, homicides, and it's not shown here. 2019, 24 uh, homicide. 15 to 18, 22 to 48 uh, in terms of uh, homicide. 
suicide cases in the bar charge as you can see a few hundred six hundred seven hundred for the others um, they um, died um, all the way to hospital or after they, they've been sent to the hospital they they can be accidental death If you want further breakdown uh, for the 8,000 cases, um, the 20 or so reportable cases, uh, we don't have any further breakdown in this regard. Yes, please. Now, uh, for the uh, coroner's uh, department or the coroner's court, it, it, are they part of the government or are they independent? The court, yes. You mentioned um, the pathologist. Um, do they work for a different, a separate department? But they they work for the Department of Health. They are operating independently, aren't they? They're, they're not. Uh, they're not part of the police. No, they they are separate department. And also, the uh, the government chemist is also uh, a separate department. Chairman, thank you. Each year, we have uh, eight thousand or so uh, cases in this uh, category. Uh, I read the newspaper, I watch the news, and I get to hear uh, such reports. It seems to me that, that the number is far higher than than um, I thought um, they, there are. From uh, the media, that the media do report them. Now, when when would the media become aware of um, these cases? Do the police have any uh, system to to make uh, the announcement regarding these bodies found? As uh, members of the public, um, do we get to hear about these reports? Thank you. Right, uh, there are different sources uh, for the media. Uh, say, for instance. Uh, there are some um, people who uh, report the cases uh, who would also um, post this uh, on the social media, and the mass media would become aware of this. And the PPRB also has a mechanism whereby um, the media would be notified uh, for them to, to uh, cover the stories. So they do have uh, different uh, sources to, to become aware of from these cases. Although we do not know uh, when they would turn up at the scene. Uh, sorry if I may add for the PPRB each day um, when we uh, receive um, these cases, uh, we will have a, a system um, to um, disseminate a message to the um, uh, ISD and also the mass media. There is also another source. Uh, the, the media uh, would um, station at the uh, A and E departments, and if um, they they find any cases of interest to them, they would uh, follow up. Any further questions? Yes, Alex. Please. Chairman, thank you. Thank you very much for the detailed presentation regarding the uh, death um, cases and the investigation. If you may uh, share with us now for these uh, complaint cases against the police, um, how, how do you um, handle them? Are you uh, referring to uh, complaint cases uh, concerning uh, the, the discovery of bodies? Now, over the past few years, we haven't received any complaints uh, regarding the discovery of dead bodies. Maybe. Um, there may have been cases of impolite, impoliteness. In terms of um, the procedural steps, there may be complaints, but regarding the, the discovery of bodies, we haven't received any complaints over the past couple of years. But that, that's the complaints are relating to the procedural steps, uh, not investigative uh, steps. Now, uh, for homicide, suicide, or discovery of uh, bodies over the past three years, we have not notched up any complaints, um, not in the uh, in the files. Uh, my recollection is that in the course of investigation, 
uh, we didn't have any compla complaints. There were some odd complaints about um, the handling of um, the, the property or possession of the deceased, and, and some uh, felt, felt this, uh, unhappy about the situation. Any further questions? If not, um, shall we move on to the next presentation, uh, Missing Persons. Yes, please, uh, Superintendent, Chairman, Members. I am Leung Chihang, SP, uh, Acting OPS NTN. I'm going to brief members on the investigation of uh, missing persons. There are two parts to my presentation. First off, um, I'll be talking about the missing person cases all over Hong Kong, and then I'll be moving on to the investigation. All over Hong Kong, missing person cases over the past five years, uh, the figure has been trending down. 2015, three, 3710, uh, dropping to 2019, 2643. Now, the, the reason for this um, decline uh, is, are many fold. Uh, one of them is has to do with um, the improvement uh, or the advancement in IT. We do have um, the social media and, and also um, the, um, the um, instant messaging uh, apps. It would be easy to, to um, find the um, um, people. So it, it will avoid any misunderstanding or any um, misunderstanding of missing persons. Also, we have uh, some uh, demographics uh, for the figures. Um, they are similar year on year. 16 of the low, 20%. Uh, they go missing mainly because um, they are playful or they, uh, they um, have bad relationship with the family members that they run off. Uh, 16 to uh, 59, about 50 percent. Some of them uh, di did not have good relationship with family members. Some are attributed to misunderstanding, and they just um, um, went off somewhere um, without telling the family members, and therefore the, the family members called the police. Or some uh, told the, the family members that they, they were off to work, uh, but in fact they went somewhere else. And um, they, it was found that they didn't turn up for work, and, and the, the family called the police. Now, many of them are uh, foreign domestic helpers without notifying the employers, and they, they just uh, left Hong Kong. They packed up and left. And the employers uh, would normally call the police, and they uh, belong to these um, demographics. Also, 60 and above, about 30 percent. The vast majority of them. Uh, are suffering from um, dementia. They, they suffer from cognitive um, impairment, and many of them are institutionalized. So these are cases, number of cases. Some the same person can go missing for six or seven times, and these are reflected here. As uh, you understand, whether they, they are in the institutions or at home, uh, those suffering from dementia cannot uh, look after themselves, and. Uh, they, they go missing, and, and the, the family would uh, report them to the police. As we can see, the orange one is actually um, the, the cases where we found them, and the cases are cancelled. 92 to 94 percent of them uh, have been found, and the cases are cancelled. So for the remaining 67 um, percent, did they go missing, really? The vast majority of them um, were found. But for various reasons, we uh, couldn't uh, cancel the cases. Now, we do have um, different um, demographics um, to illustrate the situation over the past three years. 16 or below, uh, the missing persons. All of them were found. All of them. Why? Why? 
But why is it that uh, some of them um, could not cancel the cases? Mainly over the past three years, and mainly for three reasons. First, um, they get allocated the school place, but they didn't turn up uh, when, the, when the school starts, and the the the, uh, the school will refer these cases to us, and they're regarded as missing persons. Now, some of them are cross boundary students, and they didn't end up coming to Hong Kong to continue the studies. Or well, some Hong Kong students uh, have emigrated, uh, have. Um, um, moved overseas to pursue their education, but they're safe, but it's only that they cannot be uh, brought back to Hong Kong to cancel the case, and we simply um, couldn't cancel the case, and therefore we haven't included them in the figure. On the other hand, our family matters. Uh, like the parents or other family members, because of a custodian, then they uh, might uh, take away the, the children or the child, and then, then without telling uh, the, the, their partner, and then the, the majority of them actually just uh, well to take the kids uh, away from uh, the family, and then in this all these cases uh, we they are found, and then uh, we actually uh, are certain that they are saved, and some. Uh, outside of Hong Kong, and just because we cannot uh, have them uh, work with us, so we cannot close the case. And for those uh, who are missing, and uh, 16 years and above, and then most of them are domestic helpers, and we have uh, uh, ascertained that, that, that they have uh, left the territory, and then uh, we also actually validated uh, with the immigration, etc., and, 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 and have uh, ascertained that, that they left to the home. Kong, and then that they are also being included in the cases not close. And the second is a, a adults who actually the, uh, left the territory, and then but they uh, have not returned to Hong Kong. And uh, we, or some of them, we have uh, well, talked to them, and then they are safe. But uh, since they cannot come back to Hong Kong, and they are, they will not go back to Hong Kong, so that the case is not closed. And then the others are that uh, some might uh, be hospitalized or sent to prison because of uh, some well, the criminal offenses, and then after actually certified it with, uh, the, with the respective jurisdiction, then uh, well, uh, they cannot uh, come back, and, uh, but uh, we still cannot close the case. So uh, I would just like to give you some figures uh, to have a brief uh, impression. Of, uh, for the three, uh, past three years, uh, there are still 61 cases uh, well, falling uh, in the, the category of uh, 16 and above, so it's about 1% of this category. And uh, now I would like to go to, uh, to talk about uh, the investigation. And uh, the investigation uh, uh, involved uh, five uh, departments, and they work together and also lead the whole uh, investigation. So uh, the channel of uh, reporting the case, uh, well, the most common is the 999. They can call or they can go in person to any of uh, the police station and then to, well, report the case. And some are referred uh, by the social welfare department or the education department. And uh, some may be referred to us uh, by the uh, jurisdictions uh, from uh, uh, other countries. And so because uh, well, sometimes uh, uh, we will uh, actually help mutual uh, well, uh, assistance in uh, finding the missing person as well. So uh, we have that kind of collaboration. And uh, for missing persons, uh, well, there are some misunderstandings by the public. Well, uh, the public sometimes uh, uh, thought that uh, well, for a missing person, that uh, you only can report after that that person is uh, well missed for is, uh, is not found uh, after 24 hours or 48 hours. But this is a misunderstanding. As long as you uh, are worried and that uh, someone is missing, and then you are worried about the safety you can make that report to the police. And it is uh, not true that only the family can uh, well, that do the report. Anyone uh, who has the social contact uh, with that person and then who are concerned about the safety of the person can do the report as well. Well, in terms of investigation, after receiving the case, 
and uh, the, the frontline officers uh, will, uh, will uh, disseminate uh, the uh, information uh, so that uh, the uh, police uh, on the street uh, can uh, find that person. We also uh, request assistance from other uh, government departments that include uh, the immigration department because we want to see whether they have already left the territory, uh, the correctional the, our, uh, the department, uh, and also the welfare department because uh, the, well, that might be possible that uh, there are cases uh, well, in the the files, and uh, sometimes uh, that, that the social welfare department also operates some of the shelter homes that the dismissing person might be one of the residents there, so that uh, we have uh, the basic mechanism to, to find those missing persons. Uh, well, uh, for those priority cases, uh, we also have uh, some uh, existing mechanisms to exchange information so that we can uh, find the missing person as soon as possible. Other than that, according to the information provided, like uh, that uh, they are lost uh, in the proximity of uh, the, uh, where they live or the, the places they go often, and then uh, we will uh, try to uh, work with that uh, person who reported the case to, to go around those places to find the missing person. Well, as I mentioned, uh, well, uh, in the headquarters, they will go to more in-depth investigations to find the, the missing persons. Well, first of all, it's like uh, actually the joint uh, 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 actions well, uh, that uh, cover mostly uh, when people do hiking. And then sometimes we don't know where uh, that happened. And then uh, so we will mostly work with the fire the department and then uh, actually other departments. Uh, uh, well, uh, sometimes we last for six to seven days uh, for those search. And then, uh, well, and there are cases that we can find those person after the, well, several days of search. And then we also called upon the emergency assistance. For instance, uh, our, well, we, uh, we have asked uh, for telecommunication companies uh, to help us uh, well, in cases like uh, suicide. And then uh, there are uh, cases uh, that uh, we have succeeded in uh, helping uh, suicidal case. Uh, some of them are the taking drugs, and some are actually the burning charcoals, etc. And of course, the public also, the, uh, the, P the police through PPRB will appeal to the public for help. There are the other the social platforms uh, uh, that uh, we can uh, look into, just as I mentioned that uh, well, for the category of 60 uh, and above, then uh, there are really uh, some social the platforms that are very enthusiastic in helping us to find the missing persons. And the lastly is about comparison of DNA samples. Uh, as uh, we mentioned in the previous presentation about uh, well, the finding of body and then that there are the samples of DNA being collected well, in, within the, the, those departments. So we will do those comparison and then the, with uh, the, the DNA that was supplied by the families or other per interested persons and then the, we will send the, those DNAs to uh, the government lab to see see whether that we can identify the well, uh, like DNAs from other sources. And in all the, these cases, uh, we, we found there are suspicion. And uh, we will uh, well, very promptly uh, refer this case uh, to the criminal department. Well, there are cases uh, that, that there are missing person reports, uh, but uh, they in fact actually uh, well, homicide cases. Well, for every individual case, uh, we have uh, the standing procedure to do it. Uh, we will not stop the investigation uh, about uh, rashly. We will uh, close the case uh, if we really find the person, or that uh, we can uh, validate that that, uh, that the person is saved, and then the whereabouts is that missing person. If we cannot find, we will continue the search, and if 
not, then we will follow up the procedures. For instance, we will need to actually identify the, uh, the, uh, the person and also the certain the situation. And secondly, it's about the activity uh, they were engaged in uh, well, in the time of, uh, of missing lost or and then we will uh, inform uh, the person who uh, make the report and uh, for instance if uh, the missing person is a uh, 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 kid and or uh, 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 elderly uh, with some uh, chronic disease, then uh, we will uh, rely on the third uh, uh, family. And uh, if uh, other than those two categories, then uh, we actually need to have uh, uh, the consent of uh, the missing person well, before we can uh, inform the person who uh, made the report. Well, all uh, those who uh, report missing, and then uh, also the, the missing persons, uh, the information uh, are, are all kept confidential because uh, well, uh, uh, because this information might lead to misunderstanding and other miscommunication. Uh, I would just like to, uh, to uh, remind everyone that uh, we cannot make those information to, to a third party if uh, the person involved do not give the consent. We will make recommendations uh, for, uh, as I just mentioned, dementia person, uh, that we will suggest uh, that uh, they will carry the, the, or attack uh, well, uh, of uh, their contact uh, telephone and also addresses, etc., uh, or that uh, GPS, uh, well, uh, wearable GPS, etc., and then, uh, well, if uh, they are really the missing, uh, well, certain uh, at the time of the day, then uh, they could be easier to uh, be found. And then we will make a referral and for the children, and then sometimes that, that it is uh, our well, that place that, that the family could not take good care of them. Then we will apply for the protection order, and then also the, with the well, consultation of the, our respective social worker. This is ends my report. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Lang. Well, my question is that in your presentation, I'm really glad if I hear it correctly that uh, the missing uh, population that uh, well, the over 90 percent could be found, and it's really good, uh, very satisfactory uh, results. And then, uh, can you actually just elaborate more on this? And then since uh, the uh, found uh, percentage is so high, can you share with us uh, uh, cases uh, like uh, body found, like homicide cases? Well, you only find out that uh, this is a missing person after that the, the case happened. Well, what I mean is that in Hong Kong, as you mentioned, that uh, well, uh, that uh, sometimes that actually that you find the missing person uh, because uh, well, in different circumstances. Well, is there cases that uh, well or they, the person cannot be identified even that they are found dead? Do you understand my question? Well, I would like to uh, well answer your first question first. First question is about actually uh, how successful uh, we found that person. Well, in the past three years, all of, uh, missing persons under 16 are found. And uh, for those uh, above uh, the 16, there are still 61 cases is not found. So it's just about 0.9% uh, uh, of the missing population population. So it's like 99% are found. And uh, for the rest, it's not that we 
fail to find them. Uh, the case is just that uh, we know where they are, and then we need to ascertain the safety before we can tell uh, the interested part persons. And then uh, well, you mentioned about uh, uh, whether that uh, we only need to know that uh, they are reported missing after they we find them dead. We don't have those uh, well figures, and uh, that that uh, well we have. Oh, come across uh, the two the different uh, circumstances. Well, just as I mentioned, in the process of investigation, when we are uh, doing that missing, missing person investigation, that uh, while well, we only have the information from the, the person who reported the case, like uh, they uh, d uh, have not to return home after a certain a time or date, then so we will actually uh, well follow uh, the track of uh, the missing person, uh, like looking, uh, going through the CCTV, or that uh, we found out that they have not left home after coming home, and things like that. Well, in some cases, uh, someone uh, left the premises with a large suitcase, and we would uh, refer these cases, these uh, suspicious cases, um, to the criminal investigation team. And in these cases, um, they uh, no longer are missing person cases. For uh, dead bodies found, um, we would follow the relevant procedures. And the first thing they would um, ascertain is um, the identity of the deceased. From our data bank, um, we will know uh, whether this person is a missing person or not. If I may add, now this is uh, another way of looking at the detection rate in 2019. The missing persons, 93% uh, of them are found. For the 7%, it's just that um, they haven't shown up. Members can interpret that as um, the detection rate um, for the missing person cases. And some uh, are homicide cases, and uh, some, um, as um, we said, um, we don't have um, this kind of breakdown in, in terms of missing persons. We bring up these um, two topics because um, these two topics are interrelated. If uh, we find um, a body, as you recall, uh, the first thing we have to do is um, to ascertain the identity, and then uh, we can uh, cross-check with um, the missing person unit. Um, the, the two units are, um, are intertwined. In our contact with uh, the families, uh, not all of them um, are living together. Um, every single day, and some uh, some would consider it um, a normal thing uh, for uh, one of the family members to go missing for um, uh, ten or, or twelve days. And uh, if uh, we find um, the the missing persons or the dead body, we will notify the, the family members. Uh, so uh, it, it sounds as if um, we are separate uh, departments, but in fact, uh, we do compare notes, uh, we do work um, hand in glove um, to ascertain whether there are any criminal elements. Now, have you found a dead body, and there is no identity on him, and you, you cannot uh, simply uh, verify the identity? In our criminal investigation, yes, and there are cases like this. Uh, as we said, uh, we would get hold of the DNA samples for comparison. Now, there can be a lot of um, evidence um, that will be followed up on. Like Chairman, you said, if there is uh, no identity uh, upon discovery, if there is a corpse with no identity, um, we would um, find out um, what actually happened. We would um, look at the DNA, and in Hong Kong, Hong Kong is a populous place. We do have um, CCTV, um, the octopus cards, and 
the criminal investigation teams uh, will use all sorts of methods uh, to identify the, the body and, and, and see who, who this person really is. Uh, Superintendent Leung, if I may uh, put a question to you. You said um, that at the beginning of the school year, the student uh, doesn't turn up and uh, the school will report um, a missing person to the police. Have I, have I heard you wrong? Over the past three years, in 2019 is uh, less often. Before, yes, um, there were cases um, of referrals from the school or from the Education Bureau. They don't call the, the 999, but we do have liaison with um, the, the schools and they would refer cases um, to us um, to, to find um, these people. We just uh, classify them as missing persons, right, understood? My question is, why is it that the school or the Education Bureau um, doesn't inform the parents first? That sometimes um, they, um, they, they would um, send their kids um, to another school without notifying the government, or they would uh, send the, um, the kids abroad without notifying the, the, uh, the school. I think the first thing to do should be to um, inform the, the parents. And the parents might say they're always off to um, the UK and, and there is no need for the police to step in. Right, to answer your question, in most of um, the referral cases, they have um, taken these steps, but in fact, um, they couldn't find um, the, the, the right people, and that, 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 that's why they refer the cases to us. Um, the parents might leave uh, some contact information, and they would contact the parents, and it's just that um, they cannot get anywhere that they would um, call the police. Those below 16, uh, we are particularly concerned about um, uh, these people going missing. So the, um, we would try to um, locate them to make sure that they are safe enough. Even on the part of the police, uh, even if we do something extra, uh, we, we, we're delighted to do so. Right, maybe I've heard you wrong. The parents or the Education Bureau um, must have um, ascertained uh, the missing person before they call the police. And I think that, that explains the situation. Superintendents. I heard about um, the, the bodies found uh, with the bodies. There, um, there, there are deaths, and also the other presentation was about um, missing persons. If I may put a direct question here. Over the past year or so, from the media, I learned about people um, who died without other bodies being found. So uh, are these cases not covered in, the, in these two reports? There are a lot of media reports about deaths in Hong Kong. You know where I'm coming from, I'm sure. From these uh, reports, there are there any bodies? Have you uh, received any reports about missing persons? Uh, sorry, I'd like to clarify uh, your question. Are you saying that over the past year there were bodies found? No, I'm saying that there are reports about deaths. But it seems that in these reports uh, there are no bodies found. And I'm not sure uh, whether there are any uh, reports made to the police about missing persons. Can you um, verify these figures from your reports? In our record, we haven't received any uh, reports like this. Nobody. Uh, no family members, no friends ever turn up uh, at the police station to file a report. But you know, there are media reports about deaths. Yes, over the past year, yes, past year or so, there are deaths that occurred in Hong Kong. But from your record, you haven't found any bodies, did you? If I understand you, um, to put it bluntly, uh, these uh, 831, whether there were there were any deaths at the Prince Edward Station, and there was an altar set up um, to, to worship, um, to mourn the dead, we haven't received any reports. You haven't found any bodies, nor have you received any missing person report. Correct, yeah, thank you. 
Chairman if I may put a question here. Over the past five years, 61 people have disappeared from the face of the earth. And let me supplement over the past three years, over 16, um, we are still investigating and we're still finding them. They didn't disappear from the face of the earth. It's just that uh, you haven't found them, have you? We found some of them. Although we, we can't really verify their safety and, and call upon them to cancel the case. Now, my question is, over the past 15 months, out of the 61 cases, uh, less than uh, deduct those who have been found, out of these uh, 61 over the past 15 months, uh, deducting those uh, who have been found, how many of them are there still? In 2019, um, for the missing person cases, uh, 1st of August to today, out of the 61, August 1st to today, we don't have these figures. Out of the 61, how many of them are from August 1st to today? Uh, now, you know that some of them are still alive. It's just that you cannot cancel, um, close the file. How many of them are there? out of the 61. Thank you for your question. From August 1st to now, we don't have the figure. In 2019, there are 40 um, that are still being followed up. Of um, the 41, how many have been found, or how many are still being found? Each, I think we have to look at the, the individual case uh, cases one by one, and, and the figures are changing. Uh, day by day, so I don't have the figures for you. Any further questions? Yes. Uh, this is a general question. We heard uh, from the media, from um, the community out there, that people called the police, and the police would say that, um, oh, look, this person is going to be missing for a couple of hours. And I heard that uh, one has to go missing for X number of hours before um, the file will be opened. I is it really the case? Can you uh, elucidate on this? Also, you have um, the regional missing person investigation team, and you would uh, conduct joint action. You would um, uh, call for um, assistance. Last year, there were 2,000 or so uh, reported cases. It's impossible for you to follow up on each and every case. Um, so in terms of the intensity of uh, investigation, um, do you uh, go by the, the um, information that you receive uh, before you decide on how much uh, resources you devote um, to the investigation? Thank you for your question. Now, it, it is said that uh, it has to be 24 hours or 48 hours. There is no such thing as this. As long as uh, you feel that your family members are uh, safety at stake, you can call 999, or you can turn up at the police station, or you can approach any uh, patrol officer, or you, if you know me, you can call me, and I can refer the case to my colleagues for follow-up. Now, in some cases, uh, like elderly and, and children, uh, like uh, Superintendent Leung said a moment ago, we would uh, disseminate uh, the information to all the uh, beat patrol um, officers, and we would invite um, the parents or the family members to, um, to get on to our uh, emergency vehicles or patrol vehicles um, to, to, to go around and look for the missing person. Uh, during these um, cruising around, we would uh, sometimes be able to, to find um, the elderly missing person. So there is no question of a fixed time limit. You talked about 2,000 or so cases, and we are working under heavy workload. Um, uh, under what circumstances would, you, would we devote more resources? Now, in each and every case, we would devote just as much resources. Uh, we have um, 2,006 uh, cases today. We can do so much, and next year we may have 3,000. I bet there's no such number. On the basis of the evidence, that uh, we will devote our, our resources. Let, let me cite you a light-hearted example. A couple of years ago, in overseas uh, countries, um, there are some uh, natural disasters. And this is a place uh, which is uh, visited by a lot of Hong Kong people. And some call the police um, to see whether they, their family members uh, were there. In fact, um, as it turned out, 
um, they didn't leave Hong Kong. They haven't left Hong Kong, and they they would make a special request um, that, that don't don't tell them that I called the police. That we would not. Uh, we would take each and every case seriously because there may be a criminal element uh, for these cases. In particular, uh, those um, children under 16 or adolescents, we are particularly concerned because uh, we are worried that, that uh, they may be uh, victims of crimes. So we will uh, go uh, spare no effort in this regard. Now, for the uh, missing persons unit, if they have any uh, threat of suspicion, they would um, um, let the investigation team join in. Uh, well, sometimes, uh, and then we also heard that uh, well, children in some other countries has been kidnapped and then uh, being sold uh, to other places uh, like villages, etc. Well, we haven't uh, come across uh, this kind of cases, and there are uh, the reports saying that uh, some children are being kidnapped and things like that. So, uh, but uh, well, there is no such case uh, well, according to our uh, record record. Uh, well, because of time, because uh, well, we still have another meeting to attend, so can we uh, well, move on to, uh, to the next item? Thank you so much for the two superintendents. For Thank you for your very detailed presentation. Well, maybe that I would just uh, make a brief uh, conclusion. Uh, well, just two special items. Uh, was were arranged because we understand that uh, the public has a, a very big concern about these two the issues. And then after the explanation on the death uh, inquiry and also the missing persons, that uh, the police already adopt a very uh, uh, detailed well a procedure. And then with uh, well the en engagement of different experts and also different government departments and uh, to work on the process. Whereas IPCC said and then uh, well, uh, that it is really actually uh, well, important that uh, we uh, understand that we cannot cover any debt cases or any missing person cases or, uh, or now that we have uh, well so efficient communication system and also so many uh, well concerned parties in Hong Kong we will uh, well uh, fight for justice uh, for the, each of these death cases and also the four missing persons that report to the police if there is no other well, uh, questions uh, we will uh, give the floor back to, to the chair. Well, for the third um, world, uh, world uh, agenda item, the, the couple's monthly uh, statistics, well, the, from uh, uh, the 2020, uh, we can see that uh, we uh, have uh, less cases, and then that there is, uh, or, uh, for the first five months, uh, we have uh, 166 uh, well, the complaint cases. So that, uh, compared uh, to last year, there uh, is less. Then uh, it's uh, like at uh, 45 percent less. Well, from the first uh, five months, uh, there are cases, and then there are minor complaints uh, like uh, or negligence of duty and then the, also the misconduct etc and then it's uh, like 75 uh, percent of the total complaint and then more serious uh, complaints like assault and then the threat etc there are the well the 21 percent of the total complaint you can see that the, the neglect of duty and there is uh, about the 217 cases of uh, 43 percent and the misconduct uh, 164 cases the 33.2 percent and the first five months and the minor the complaints of uh, the uh, 371 the cases there uh, uh, 52 percent less than compared to uh, last year. Uh, assault and then the, the 67 cases is uh, well 13.5 uh, percent. Abuse of authority 36.1 percent. Threat 1.4 percent. And then the uh, uh, offensive languages is 10 uh, cases 2.0 percent. 
third uh, or the compared the first uh, five months uh, or at the 2019, uh, the neglect of uh, duty is at uh, 213. So that, that with this uh, decrease of uh, the 31 percent, and uh, the um, rudeness. Uh, as also in the decrease and offensive uh, languages, and there are two uh, cases less. And assault uh, from the 52 the increases to 67 this year is about 8.8 uh, percent. Uh, among them, the 23 is related uh, to the, the anti fugitive ordinance. And threat is from 4 to 7, so there are three cases more. And then uh, the abuse of authorities is uh, increased from 10 to 30, so uh, 20 uh, percent, 20 cases more, and the 200 percent increase. And then the, in the, the those complained, and then the, the, uh, they are all related to the fugitive ordinance. And. Uh, or the, the fabrication of evidence uh, is about uh, three cases less. So this is my report about the monthly statistics. Any questions? If not, then we will go to the complaints related to uh, the anti-fugitive ordinance. Well, until uh, uh, the 5th of June to 2020, uh, the total complaint we received is 1,844 cases, and uh, the complaining is 8,120. And uh, 601, uh, that means uh, that the 32.6 percent are the reportable uh, complaints, and then the notified complaint is 1,243 cases. In the reportable uh, well, the cases, there are minor uh, well, the complaints. It's about uh, the 60, uh, 6.8 percent, and the misconduct uh, well, is uh, 210. And uh, the offensive language is uh, uh, 17 cases, and uh, the, the serious complaints is uh, 200 uh, or some, and assault is 107, and uh, well, abuse of duty is 113, is uh, about 18.8 percent. Fabrication of evidence is uh, 0 0.3 percent. Well, I meant uh, the 8,000 uh, were complaining. That means that 8% are uh, related uh, to the 601 uh, reportable uh, cases. And then uh, we have already uh, uh, kicked into contact with 80% uh, of them. And 117 uh, were well, food investigation. And then uh, 144 withdraw the case. And the eight uh, were well, resorted to simple the resolution. And then 50 of them have not decided how to handle this uh, well, complaints. And the 52 is uh, not uh, traceable. And and then and, uh, 134 have not uh, actually responded to our, our, our gap and uh, request. And then the, the notifiable cases is 1,243 cases. We have already uh, uh, contact 1,440 is about 19.3 percent of them. We have already tried to, to contact 5,427, uh, the remaining part, but they have not responded to us yet. And then, uh, well, some because they do not uh, leave us any need uh, valid uh, well contact, so we cannot uh, well talk to them. And then the, the two, the 184 are still uh, to be contacted. I would like to uh, report uh, the notifiable uh, cases according to, to uh, our ordinance that 
uh, if uh, the, that is a reported uh, complaint by uh, the third party, they are being uh, classified under this uh, category. But uh, despite that, the, the uh, couple still need to uh, give a summary of uh, doing the notifiable uh, cases and then the reasons for the categorization. If the IPCC do not agree with that, that they can request a couple uh, to reclassify the, to the reportable cases, that means that the couple they cannot and just make the categorization on its own. So the, from uh, uh, the, until the, the 5th of June, the 2020, we have uh, received actually the 1,243, uh, and then it involved uh, what, 7,473 complainants. And uh, that is about 92% uh, of the, the complainant, and then they are being classified as uh, notifiable cases. Within this uh, 1243, about half of them, and that is 55.3, uh, uh, they are the, the people who the, made the complaints regularly. That, uh, and the purple and the blue. And then, the, and then just actually the both one and then the, the second uh, complainant, and then the, they are already uh, make complaints that uh, was uh, like 30% uh, of the total uh, cases. And then the, the second is that there are sample complaints. That means that uh, they had uh, web templates, and then they sent out and then the four people to, to do the complaints. And then about 57.6%, uh, uh, 4,301, and then doing this complaint by templates. And uh, since uh, they are not a uh, person of the case, and they are just actually uh, getting the information to online or duplicating information of the cases online. They can even uh, supply and some the detailed information about the case. So it actually creates a lot of difficulty for us to follow up on the uh, cases. And, and uh, when we try to uh, contact uh, the complainant, and uh, we will uh, contact them through the email or the postal office or the telephone uh, number. And then all this uh, conversation will be recorded. But uh, until now, over 70% have not responded to uh, the couple. And of course, each case is different, but the couple will do, do uh, handle the cases in a fair and impartial manner. So this ends my report. Question. OK, thank you, Chair. Uh, you talk about uh, reportable okay, cases. Uh, the 22% uh, withdraw their complaint. And, and uh, well, they don't need to, to give you the reason, right? And the second, uh, since they uh, don't uh, need to, to give the reason, but have you ever tried to find out why they withdraw the case? Well, in general, we will ask them why. But of course, if uh, the complainant uh, do not uh, want to tell us, uh, we will respect the decision. So most of them will tell you why. Yeah, most of them will tell us why. Well, have you ever made an analysis on the, the uh, replies? Well, uh, that my, most of them uh, were well, due to misunderstanding. And then after we explained to them, they uh, were realized that, uh, that there is no severe mistakes committed by the police. So that's why uh, they uh, mostly choose to withdraw the case. Uh, there is the standing uh, procedure, right? Yeah, we have a standing procedure. Other than the, in our conversation, we uh, will record all that uh, all through the process. And, and if we are seeing them in person, then uh, we will have uh, an observer uh, the, to be uh, the witness uh, all through the process. And if they decide to withdraw the case, then uh, we will have uh, uh, 
a senior, a more senior uh, officer to the certified and to confirm that the, the person knows uh, well that, that uh, they are, are going to withdraw the case. Well, about uh, that report I've already, uh, now I would like to ask uh, Mr. Khan uh, to uh, talk about uh, the 52 recommendations uh, suggested by in the, the thematic report. Now I would like to uh, uh, well, uh, well, touch on that the 52 recommendations as uh, proposed by the thematic report. Well, the couple, uh, well, on the 15th of uh, May, uh, uh, complete uh, report uh, on the, the incidents uh, that happened uh, during the period. We uh, put a lot of emphasis on the report, and we thank very much uh, on uh, the Secretariat and also the team uh, to come up with such uh, an excellent uh, report and also the 52 recommendations. And the police are really grateful to the Chairman and the um, Secretariat um, for meeting the uh, four staff associations on the 19th of May and um, listen to the views of the um, associations. Now, regarding the recommendations of the thematic study, the Security Bureau has uh, formed a task force and on 28th of May, uh, the first meeting was held, which was chaired by the Secretary for Security, Mr. John Lee. In this uh, task force, we will be following up on the recommendations. We had um, the Deputy uh, Commissioner um, attending the, the meeting with um, the S4S. Uh, during the meeting, um, the Secretary has uh, mapped out some key directions with um, the task force, and there are five different areas um, for these uh, 52 recommendations. The police uh, will set up five working groups um, to focus our attention on the uh, follow-up follow of um, the recommendations. The first one is um, to uh, strengthen the dissemination of information and the review uh, of um, relationship with the media. Second, um, review the uh, use of force. Third, uh, the uh, improvement of um, the, the temporary custody. And fourth, um, the um, police uh, deployment, and the fifth is um, the internal um, training and coordination. And they are headed up uh, by um, the um, assistant uh, commissioners. During, after the first meeting on 28th of May, the five uh, working groups have already uh, swung into action. Last week, um, between 8th and 10th of June, the five working groups have um, held the preliminary meetings to uh, work out the, the scope of work. In July, uh, these uh, working groups uh, will hold the first, uh, their first uh, working group uh, meetings, and the uh, Bureau will be attending the, the meetings as well. And they will be ascertaining the uh, complexity and urgency of the matters and, and come up with um, the ways to review and follow up on the recommendations. We will be reviewing the existing mechanism to identify areas for improvement, and how we can enhance the training and, and enhance um, the strategies and, and come up with um, improvement uh, measures. The working group uh, will be uh, submitting um, progress reports uh, to the task force of the Security Bureau. The SB task force will also be submitting working reports uh, to the chief executive. In August, the first um, working report will be submitted to the CE, and there will be periodic or uh, quarterly reports. The police uh, will stick with the existing mechanism. Uh, we use um, this joint uh, meeting platform to bring the IPCC up to date on our work. We attach a lot of importance to the recommendations. We will uh, work alongside the uh, task force of the Security Bureau in order to uh, improve our quality of work. All right, I'd like to report to members that 
um, the chairman of a number of uh, working groups and, and myself and met um, Mr. John Lee, the Secretary for Security. He um, assured us uh, of all the steps that you um, took us through uh, a moment ago. We'll follow up on this. Chairman, thank you. Mr. Khan, I'm delighted to hear that um, the police attached so much importance to the 52 recommendations since uh, the publication of uh, the thematic study report. Um, we gave a lot of media interviews, and during the interviews, we heard a lot of questions about why we didn't um, summon the protesters um, to, to give their input and, and give their views. Here, it shows that a lot of people uh, do have a very scanty knowledge about the terms of reference of the IPCC. Under the existing framework, the IPCC is not equipped with any investigative powers. And under different uh, circumstances, we have been explaining this to the public. In November last year, the international expert panel uh, came to Hong Kong. We have uh, already talked about the extent of our terms of reference, and they, they know full well uh, at the extent of our powers. They, we have uh, met um, a, lot of, a lot of people, and we have made uh, all sorts of arrangements. During the seven-month period, uh, when we put together the thematic uh, study report, because of the, the extent of our uh, powers, we have um, invited some um, university uh, units um, to conduct an investigation, uh, to conduct uh, some studies, including the CUHK and the University College of London. And you mentioned um, the working groups in, within the, the police. I think uh, you can look at um, the perception of the stakeholders. And I hope that you will in incorporate um, the, the perceptions of um, different stakeholders, uh, the members of the public, and, and all the other uh, stakeholders' views uh, and perception in this regard. Let me add, in the 52 recommendations, we, we have um, taken reference uh, from the study reports of CUHK and also the UCL, University College London. And this is uh, really something for reference. Any further questions? I appreciate that um, during the uh, protests and rallies, um, there are conflicts between the police and the media. I hope that the, the police uh, would review the existing mechanism and give clear uh, guidelines um, to the frontline people in order to minimize any complaints or any um, conflicts arising. Chairman, thank you very much, and uh, for the comments. The, one of the working groups is um, about the dissemination of information and the relationship with the media. This is uh, one of the priorities of that particular working group. In our day-to-day -day work, we will enhance um, the uh, colleagues' understanding of um, the relationship with the media. As you're probably aware, we have um, more uh, liaison teams uh, on the scene to deal with um, the working relationship between the media and the police. This working group uh, certainly can do more uh, to, to avoid the conflicts and the, um, the friction that um, were mentioned by uh, Anne. If I may follow up on uh, Anne's point, I think this is a two-way street. The police have uh, to do their work. And I hope that um, your working group uh, will be liaising with um, the Journalists Association. The journalists um, should be aware of um, the fact that they have to be mindful of their own personal safety. And they should exercise uh, some uh, self-discipline. And I think it, it is uh, really a two-way street. Thank you, um, Chairman. Thank you very much for your comments. We will have regard to all um, different angles. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Khan. The last item is Capo's criminal and disciplinary checklist. Chairman, the checklist uh, is uh, in the enclosure. I've got nothing to add. You don't have uh, anything to add. Right, okay, good. So members have read that. So uh, item number four, any other business, any AOP items? If not, that's it for today. Uh, today is the last day of um, a senior assistant commissioner, and I wish you every success in your new endeavor. Uh, let's let's hope that we'll a path will cross again going forward. And I'd like to welcome Rebecca to um, to this um, committee. Tao 不斷地看看這個情況 提供資料方面或者是我們約見的時候 或者秘書長還有補充一下那個其實有多了很多工作就是投訴那個處理的工作 6月 這個投訴表現法是向這個監警會提交了報告那二百四十二個案件其實我們已經做了一百二十個案件那個電話錄音是說些甚麼在上個月我們出這個專題審視報告
時間佢咁耐咧，其實咧即係有好多個案咧，譬如話喺嗰啊二百四廿二宗咧個案啊，喺舊年六月至到十二月發生嘅，有七啊九個個案咧係叫做有案上待處理嘅，即係話咧涉及嘅投訴係涉及用武力，但係咧因為投訴人咧佢本身係有個案件咧係在正在處理當中。咁喺嗰個投訴咧就唔可以再進行住嘅嚇，當然呢個你要等個法庭嗰個案件咧係完咗，我哋先至可以再做。咁啊，而家為止啊，我哋誒已經係處理咗嘅，或者係回覆咗呢個誒投訴人嘅，就有誒主要嘅案件咧，主要涉及啲行為不當，譬如話啲誒粗言穢語啊咁樣。咁誒目前為止咧，我哋有通過咗四單，四單咧就係咧，其實都係涉及啲粗言穢語。有兩單咧係叫做誒獲證明屬實嘅，即係因為呢度咧，我哋係透過誒、呃、現場誒、呃、傳媒一啲誒錄影帶，咁我哋咧就真真正正係即係冇得走啦嚇，即係一即係有有證有據啦咁樣。咁有兩個個案咧係獲證明屬實嘅，咁誒、呃、涉事嘅警員咧係接受呢個懲處嘅嚇。咁、啊、而有另外兩宗咧就係撤回。咁啊，即係頭先我再講一次啦。而家我哋第二個步驟咧，而家成個誒監警會誒嗰、呃那個。誒主要工作就係話，我哋會盡快係會去處理收到嘅投訴個案，就係話反修例事件引起嘅嚇咁樣。Mr. Neil, I'm from RTHK.、Um, yeah. Madam Mac just now was saying that more than half of the no reported, or I think it was the notable complaints,、uh, notifiable complaints,、uh, came from seven complainants. Like she was saying that these are mass complainants, like they, they were only Doing the complaints in mass, do you think Ms. Madam Mac、uh, had a right attitude in trying to say that a lot of these protest-related complaints only came from a few individuals? I, I don't think that she she's portrayed any attitude at all. Just this is just a fact. I mean, we we、we'll、need to look into this, of course,、uh, and, and see whether whether、uh, what comes out of this, and、uh, we need further analysis. This is the first time I've heard it, incidentally. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, we we need further analysis on this. Uh, I don't see that as an attitude as such.、Uh, it is just a fact at this stage. But, but、mm. do you think that because there there are still quite a number, that there is a mass number of cases, a few thousands of them, like seven thousands of them. Do you think her could arrive? Could there are not seven thousand cases. There are one thousand seven hundred cases coming from seven thousand people.、Mm -hmm. Right. My second question actually is that、um, about the missing person issue.、Um, the force could only say that forty people. Were still missing、uh, from cases stemming from last year.、Um, that th these cases are still outstanding. Do you think、uh, the force、uh, was it? Did they give enough detail about、uh, how these 40 people are still missing? Like, do you think it's acceptable they were unable to say break down like how many of them came from the second half of last well, year? Of course, this is very much part of the operational uh, uh, matter. Uh, we've not got a complaint at all about missing persons, as far as we are concerned. Uh, so, so、uh, as far as details concerned, I mean, I'm, I'm interested. I mean, I'm certainly interested because I might get lost myself in a few years' time, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm quite interested in that. <laughs> yeah. You made light of the fact that 40 people are still missing. I don't. I don't make light of it. Incidentally, I'm not making light of it at all. This is this is a question of the for the police. Yeah. 
or committed suicide, yeah. it's, not, it's not an issue to make light of. I, I, I have not made light of it at all. Why do you say I, I make light of the fact that I might get lost myself, in fact, in a few years' time? In fact, which is well possible. That is the only light part. I don't make light of it at all. It is very, very important that every single person is accounted for in Hong Kong. And that's what the police is doing. Well, sorry, yeah. sorry, Tony, if I, if I can turn to a wider aspect. Sure. Um, in, the, in the US, we've seen officers in, in really in these police brutality being sued, suspended, the law being changed in weeks after the protest. One year after Hong Kong's uh, seeing all these protests and it's, it's coming, returning, none, none of the officers, in a sense, were being held accountable. Do you feel there is a delay where justice is seen to be done? And what's your advice to the chief executive on that? Well, first of uh, all, uh, secondly, yeah, yeah. secondly your, yeah. your term is expiring in yeah. another year. Uh, you explained, the government cited you explained the personal reasons that led you to these decisions. Why, what's, what's the personal uh, consideration on well, that? Well, my personal consideration is very simple. In fact, when, when I took up the job, in fact, two years ago, I did tell the chief executive because of my personal circumstances. You know, I've been sick for a long time, in fact, uh, 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 and uh, my personal health may not allow me to, in fact, to do the full term of six years. Uh, so uh, that's, that's, the, that's the personal reason. I have no other personal reason, really, for that. Uh, as far as be people being held accountable, of course they should be held accountable. That's, that's why we have a complaint system. I mean, people now, uh, 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 at the moment, there are at least, I think, 10 to 12 cases, civil actions actually going on in the courts right now. Uh, there are, I think, about six judicial reviews going on. Uh, there are three, uh, I think at least two private prosecutions uh, being proceeded in, in the courts at the moment. So uh, I don't see why people are not being held accountable at the moment. Uh, there are a large number of complaints. That we'll have to go through all of them carefully. Uh, the police will investigate them first, and secondly, we'll ensure that these investigations are done fully and fairly. Uh, yeah, I'm very sorry. I, I do have to leave because I, I, I have... Uh, yeah, yeah, I have to leave you to the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 或者是一個人作出的投訴 跟住九月一號佢有一個投訴,咁就兩個投訴嚟嘅,兩個投訴嚟嘅。但係如果你話同一個場景係有好多個相同嘅投訴人,即係佢講緊一個scenario,一個情景呢,其實到我哋去睇
。咁但係另外一個情景就係有啲人咧，就係、是、佢可能好留意嗰個事態發展，佢每日咧都可能去睇誒媒體嘅報導啊、報紙啊、誒、呃、呢、這個誒、呃、電視啊咁樣。咁跟住佢睇到一啲情景嘅時候，跟住佢去投訴。咁呢個人咧，陳大文啦、啊，或者叫陳大文啦、啊、嚇，咁、啊、嘅時候咧，咁變咗佢喺投訴經濟方面會有。好多嘅記錄咯，即係作作為投訴人嘅記錄咯，即係頭先阿阿阿投訴經濟課就咁講咁嘅意思。咁但係我哋其實呢啲咁嘅分析嘅資料咧，對我哋都有用嘅。我哋都知道其實個場景係點樣嘛。好簡單，誒六百零一個需回報投訴個案，其實我哋都會 lock lock 咗係大概有百分之二十三咧，其實係誒係記者投訴嚟嘅，即係嗰個投訴人咧，其實係記者嚟嘅。咁其實我哋咪知道嗰、那個。即係由呢個反修例事件引起嘅，其實咧啊，有四分一係一個誒、呃，大概四分一啦，百分之廿三啦，就係、是、誒、呃、記者現場記者。另外咧，百分之廿七咧就係、是、被拘捕人士，而另外五成咧就係、是、一啲其他嘅市民啦嚇，佢受到影響咁。咁所以我哋其實係喺。嗰、那個數字嘅分析咧，我哋都會做到分析嘅。咁等我哋知道更加了解成個過程係點樣啊？咁樣或或者我直接啲問啦，即、就、係、是、我意思係指你會唔會視呢堆即係呢幾個人 repeatedly 去投訴嘅係作為一個惡意嘅投訴，而令到佢喺個處理投訴過程當中，你對佢投訴嘅 merits 又好個指控又好咩會有特別啲嘅處理咧？唔係，我我諗先講翻咧，其實極簡簡單講，頭先講咧，同一樣嘅投訴咧，可能投訴人唔止一個嘅。但係佢投訴嗰、那個個案都可能一個，反過嚟咧，亦都一個人咧可以投訴好多種唔同嘅場景。頭先講，其實每一樣嘢咧，我哋都會根據嗰個事實去投訴嗰個問題，我哋去睇嘅。就好多時候咧，即係誒，大家都知有陣時投訴人嗰、那個即係詳細資料未必有，但係個投訴最緊要投訴本身個性質同埋個案嗰、那個資料咧。我哋係最關注嗰樣嘢嚇，咁啊每一個個別嘅投訴嘅個案，譬如一個人佢投訴五樣嘢，每一樣嘢我哋都睇嚇。就另外頭先講啦，如果同樣一個投訴一個個案，但係有好多人都投訴嘅，咁都係其實睇一樣嘢。咁呢個最主要咧就係個個案個情況。或或者我補充翻頭先嗰度啦，李局長，其實我哋嘅睇法咧就係話誒。頭先嗰啲數目字係一啲統計嘅數字，同我哋睇啲個案係絕對冇牽連嘅。即係話，我哋有啲統計嘅數字係統計到係誒誒十十六歲以以上、十六歲以下咁樣。至於我哋十六歲以上嘅投訴同十六歲以以上以下做嘅投訴，我哋都係同一個尺度、同一個方針去到睇嘅。所以變咗頭先嗰啲數字係啲統計嘅數字，同我哋去到誒誒、啊啊、審視嗰啲投訴嘅嘅正確性啊個結果啊係冇關係嘅，好嘛？有一個場景，有一百個人投訴又好，有一個人投訴又好，我哋都係睇同一個場景咁解嘅啫。嚇、啊、咁，所以唔好覺得係話有誒誒、呃呃、三個人。就投訴咗二百次啊！咁，咁我咪照睇，係咁睇法啫嘛，就唔會影響到話，因為佢投訴過二百次，所以我就會係加重或者係減低咗佢嗰個投訴入邊嗰個份量，或者一個證據嘅即係可靠性，好嘛？係你好，我係信報記者黃展希，想問翻就係、是，因為之前誒呢、呃這個誒、呃、前國際專家小組誒。呃小組個成員就 Clifford Stott 都都有即係、就是、有講到就係話咧，即、就、係、是、就批評就話監警會嘅報告其實即係做嗰陣時候咧，就對於警方提供嘅資訊就冇一個批判性嘅思考，所以都想睇翻你哋點樣去回應。其實係咪你哋覺唔覺得你哋去做嗰份報告嗰陣時候，對對於即係、就是、警方提供資料係即係完全淨係一味接受啦，同埋就係咧佢都有講到就話其實你你即係由請佢哋過嚟到。佢哋即係誒 resign 嘅嗰時候，其實你都冇講清楚佢哋嘅即係職責或職能喺邊度。其實係咪有係咪即係你哋究竟誒、呃、即係覺唔覺唔覺得中間係存在一啲嘅溝通問題，定還是係你哋有做到啲咩疏忽，或者係即係都其實未諗定究竟國家誒、呃、即係國際專家小組其實喺嗰個報告或者審視嘅過程嘅角色係乜嘢咧？誒
。嗱，我哋即係揾國際專家嗰陣時好清楚嘅，其實都知道佢哋嗰個即係可以提供到乜嘢協助俾我哋，呢、這個好清楚。另外亦都好清楚咧，即係喺呢個監警嘅條例裏面咧，我哋嗰個職權範圍。其實我哋好強調咧，其實係聘用國際專家小組嘅時候咧，根據我哋監警個條例咧，第八條嗰、那個誒二、呃、A 同埋 C 嗰度，我哋係好強調嘅。咁至於即係誒其中個別專家，即係佢有咩嘢嘅睇法咧？當然咧，頭先你誒、呃、可能最近有或者其中一位咧，頭先你講過咧，至於佢。即係我哋當然係覺得係好遺憾，即係因為佢咁講咧，即係根據咩呢？其實我哋都即係係誒，都唔知道係點樣嘅。咁呢方面咧，即係我覺得係、呃、作為我哋其中專家小組，佢喺十一月嚟嘅時候咧，或者之前再嚟一次咧，其實喺嗰個方面咧，頭先我哋都有提過咧，就係誒佢哋俾咗好好嘅意見俾我哋，尤其是喺資料上嘅蒐集同埋。喺嗰個編排時序方面要注意嘅嘢，等等佢哋分享咗佢哋過往嘅經驗俾我哋。咁呢樣嘢咧，我哋其實對我哋好大幫助。又反過嚟咧，亦都係我哋喺嗰個佢哋嚟嘅時候，我哋都安排咗咧，即係根據佢哋要求咧，就係睇咗唔少嘅地方，或者接觸唔少嘅其他誒、呃，即係誒誒誒，即係關於即係香港嗰、那個。即、就、係、是、一般嗰個情況係點樣咧？我哋其實都喺呢度方面有同佢介紹嘅嚇。或者即係誒，就誒、呃、國際專家組度，我我再作少少補充啦。咁其實國際專家組誒，頭、呃、先你你講誒誒一位教授啦。嗱，首先咧，我諗誒、呃，我哋出咗呢個報告咧，我哋係誒誒歡迎誒、呃、社會各界人士對我哋一啲誒、呃、意見嘅嚇、啊，我哋一定會接受嘅。咁啊、呃，國際專家組咧，其實。由誒七月幾開始咧，我我誒同、啊、主席係飛過一轉去英國嘅，咁當時都係見過喺英國都見過一啲一啲誒誒監管機構嘅人士啦，咁包括誒呢、啊、位呢位教授。咁其實喺我哋成立咗誒即係五位專家組，包括有加拿大、有紐西蘭、有澳洲，咁英國有兩位啦嚇、啊，一位就係 Sir Dennis 啦嚇，咁、啊、就誒、啊、其實喺佢哋。誒應承咗誒，即係作為專家組同我哋分享佢哋嘅意見，因為呢個其實咧係唔係一個瘦身嘅，係完全冇一個僱傭關係。咁就誒，其實誒喺佢哋嚟香港之前咧，誒我哋見過一次面啦。咁就都喺誒透過網上咧，即係大家嗰個視頻嘅會議咧，其實我哋係誒大家傾過，亦都即係知道誒嗰個我哋個職能咧，一定知道我職能啦嚇，條嗰條例啊咁樣，我哋有啲乜嘢。咁我相信誒。呢、这、一個國際專家組，佢哋係知道，一定係知道我哋而家嗰個職能。只不過咧，就話喺做嘢嗰、那個，即係嗰個要求 expectation 嗰度咧，期望咧，即係誒、嗯，我哋就會話喺誒而家目前法例賦予我哋嘅權力底下，我哋盡量去做一份報告，履行我哋嘅職責。誒、嗯。而國際專家組或者呢位呢位誒誒，頭先你位講一位誒教誒教授咧，佢就覺得誒、呃、要做一份有 quality 嘅有質素嘅嘅報告咧，就一定要有調查權嚇，要、啊、有一定要有調查權。咁所以變咗咧，其實誒喺佢十一月嚟嘅時候咧，其實大家其實傾得好深嘅，即係話嗱當時都誒誒嗰個事件仍然係一路發展啦，發展當中啦。咁但係即係。點樣去做呢個報告呢？就係、是、話大家喺意見上，即係話誒，佢、呃、係知道我哋冇調查權嘅。佢一邊係佢係知道嘅。咁佢啲 advice 我哋就係話、呃、要做呢，就一定有調查權。咁但係喺我哋嘅時候，當時我哋唔能夠即時要有一個可以攞到個調查權噶嘛。咁而家我哋我哋都係話喺而家我目前法例賦予我哋權力底下。我點樣做得最好啊嘛？呢、这個就係話大家一個，因為佢可能覺得咁咪，所以國際專家組佢哋就喺十一月離開香港嘅時候，咁佢咪俾咗份即係佢哋嘅觀察啦。大家都知道佢出咗一份誒，即、呃、係、就是、或者叫叫報告啦。嚇、啊，就覺得如果係要做一份即係誒誒誒誒，佢、呃、哋、呃呃、覺得如果要做一個咁嘅 inquiry 一個 investigation 調查，咁就要有一個調查權。咁而家。
即係香誒呢、呃這個監警會嗰個係未未具備咁誒呢一個呢一、這個呢一、這個誒咁嘅權力，啊可以做得到呢樣嘢。但係我我哋嘅諗法就係話，我哋喺而家現有可以做嘅嘢，我哋希望做得最好。其實呢個就係一個睇法上一個一個大家即係一個一個一個差異啦，可以咁講。所以其實頂你講就話唔會，當然因為佢一個一個教授參與一個專家組，佢冇可能唔知道要做啲乜嘢。只不過就係話嗰個方式咧去做咧，方式去做咧，當然誒即係可能佢佢根據佢嘅專業，佢佢嘅要求係覺得應該要咁樣做。但係因為我哋亦都限於呢個條例咧，我唔可能 call 人嚟 call 證人。我唔能夠要求人哋俾俾證供，嚇咁嘅時候佢哋覺得唔係咁 feel comfortable 咯，嚇咁所以就喺十一月嘅時候嚟一次之後咧，跟住佢哋就俾咗一個 observation 一個觀察，嚇我諗呢度我要澄清一下啦，係啦。我喺呢度我都可以補充下，因為喺舊年誒揾呢個個專家組嘅時候，我都有參與一路我哋嘅社報告我都參與嘅。嗱，其實誒、呃、我希望大家係搞得清楚咧。我哋呢個報告係我哋監警會嘅報告，我哋唔係國際專家組寫嘅報告。咁我哋監警會做呢個報告之時咧，我哋都要知道咧係有，因為我哋係係以前未寫過咁樣嘅報告嘅，所以我就希望係有一啲國際專家組，而係嚟自咧，我係用嗰個係普通法嘅國家有經驗嘅人做過調查嘅人。佢哋俾啲意見，佢份報告係點樣寫咧？乜嘢係要留意嘅咧？咁樣，咁我哋係好多謝國際專家組咧，真係俾到好多意見我哋嘅。所以一個簡單嘅例，我哋係寫親任何入邊嘅嘢咧，嗰、那個出處都唔係一個嘅出處嘅嚇。我亦有好多注解喺度嘅，亦都咧係寫出嚟嘅時候咧，係要得到有關轉。即係轉轉注啊，等等嗰啲嘅機構嘅同意啊，等等嘅嘢，所以你睇翻我哋嘅報告咧，係好多係注腳喺度解釋翻我哋呢啲嘢嘅來源喺邊度。嗱，但係誒，其中有一位嘅專家咧就話，喺佢嘅經驗嚟講咧，佢覺得係要有個調查權、調查權落去做。嗱，喺佢嘅國家或者佢嚟自嘅地方咧，同我哋香港有唔同。佢哋係有某啲情況之下就咧調查權嘅咁，咁而家我哋喺香港跟個條例啊，係絕對冇調查權嘅。咁所以係喺我哋而家咁樣情況之下，咁樣嘅做出嚟嘅嘢，喺嗰位嘅人士之中，可能同佢嘅期望有落差。咁佢咪覺得，如果我哋繼續做落去嘅話，都未必等於佢可以做得咁好咁。咁而家唔係佢去做啊嘛，係嘛？咁兼夾咧就係話佢所講嘅嘢，我哋而家係要等到攞到調查權先去做嘅，咁即係仲有排等啦，即、就、係、是、我哋唔使做啦。咁我哋係喺我哋嘅權力範圍之外，喺我哋法例容許之外，盡咗個能力係將嗰個事實擺出嚟咁解。咁佢表達咗個意見，唔等於話國際專家組對嘅意見對我哋冇作用，佢係事實上係俾咗好多寶貴意見咧，俾我哋。去睇下我哋點樣去寫份報告嘅，咁亦都係一個事實上，我哋係冇調查權。咁佢認為有調查權就會唔同做法啦。咁咁係一個佢個人嘅事啫。咁亦都睇翻下國際專家組有五個人，一個人講啲咁嘅嘢啫。點解會係嗰個人講嘅嘢係咪等於佢一個人講嘅嘢，代表曬嗰五個嘅嘅成員咧？咁樣，咁我都係冇辦法可以批評到落去。不過，如果大家嘅話，都可以睇翻下，誒、呃、人與人之間睇每一件事都可能有唔同嘅觀點，咁我哋係點樣取捨啦？我能夠補充嘅唔多啦。誒，你好，立場新聞記者想問，啱啱秘書長講過咧，有兩兩宗投訴個案係證實屬實，係關於粗言穢語嗰啲，警員係要接受懲處。想問佢哋接受嘅係咩懲處咧？另外咧，喺議程嘅三 D 嗰度咧，就係、是、由一個投訴警察貨刑事及違反紀律事項一覽表啦。咁因為我哋記者冇嗰個附表嘅，想問可唔可以透露誒、呃、講下係涉及啲咩事事件同埋有啲咩懲處咧？唔該。開麥要。
。結果嗰兩個案件啦，咁係一個誒佢哋個情況係點咧？就係咧誒喺天橋啊，咁佢哋清場嘅時候咧，咁跟係，咁佢清場嘅時候咧，咁有啲可能啲市民行得慢啊，咁樣咁一啲誒即係咁就啊態度唔好啦，即係即係出言為語咁。咁呢個咧係個情處就係、是、誒。呃 advice without advice 嘅 advice 即係要分語啊，分語啊，分語啊嚇。咁另外一個咧，你講誒，我哋頭先又話開會講其中一個跟進嗰啲紀律嗰啲啊。嗱，嗰個咧就係點解咧？其實係誒內部我哋啲聯席會議其中一個誒上次議程嚟嘅，就係咧，譬如頭先呢啲案件啦，譬如話我哋誒通過咗啦，就係誒嗰個涉事嘅警員咧係即係誒係係要接受懲處啦。咁跟住咧。我哋會跟進佢幾時真係做咗嗰個懲處噶嘛？即係譬如話誒，佢佢要誒訓示呢個人，佢幾時訓示咗咧？又或者佢係要誒紀律言訊，咁佢誒幾時做咗紀律言訊咧？咁樣咁每個每三個月咧，頭先嗰日課都要向我哋咧係會報告嘅。咁就我哋會睇翻嗰啲案件咧，有多喂搞咗好耐，我點解仲未搞掂啊？咁樣咁我哋會跟進嘅，嗰、那個就係咁嘅意思啊。介意講咧，頭先嗰兩單咧係即係幾月幾號，即係係邊一次咁噶？喺嚇，我俾俾住啦，係咯，喺啲誒清清清 dispersal 清場嘅時候，喺嗰啲嗰啲誒天橋啊咁樣，就係、是、呼喝佢啊，跟住講咗句粗口啊咁樣。OK， 唔該曬。